Hi everyone, I'm Steve here with Dr. Nario, and we are going to talk about mistletoe. Mm -hmm. And we were talking before we turned the, the tape on, and, and I thought mm -hmm. I knew what mistletoe was for, but apparently there's some other uses for it. So um, that's what we're going to talk about. Dr. Nario is with Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. You can check him out online. And uh, thanks for being with us, doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. Okay, so mistletoe. I thought it was the stuff that, you know, you kiss your wife at, on holidays when you, you know, kind of push her over and get her to stand under it and you, you kiss her. But there, there's more uses for it. Is that true? There actually is. It's not only for Christmas, Steve, and for kissing people underneath it. <laughs> well, mistletoe, this is actually discovered by initially by Dr. Steiner. He saw this parasitic plant blooming in winter out of rhythm with its host tree. And it's growing towards its own center, which reminded him of cancerous tumor behavior. So it's actually something separate. It's like a little, uh, I guess, an irritant, and it shouldn't be there. That's what he was saying. And Interesting. Yeah, and, and that's why he, th he reminded it of, like, oh, it looks like a little cancer growth, right? So he's a doctor, so that's why he knows that. And in 1938, they actually now tested it in injecting it in tumors. And they noticed that, first in animal models, that they did respond. So after that study in 1955, they now used it on rabbits specifically through IV therapies. And mistletoe preparation actually now had seen to actually reduce local tumor growth and even reduce the metastatic spread of these specific tumors. And now 2021 comes along, uh, John Hopkins came into the picture and they have completed the phase one clinical trial for stage four solid tumors using I, um, IV mistletoe. And in the Hopkins study, it was showing that the tumor markers, we do that on blood tests, uh, at higher doses were observed to go down or even just get stabilized, uh, suggesting that the responses of, of these patients are, are actually there with, with mistletoe therapy. And in this study also, it improves the quality of life of patients um, heavily treated with, uh, with chemotherapy and uh, even with stable disease and improve their quality of life, enabling them to tolerate more therapy. That's why now, when you hear about John Hopkins stepping into the picture, you know it's a big thing. That's why mistletoe is starting to move the needle for cancer therapy. Wow, okay, so what are the different types? I right. mean, there's different types, right? That's correct. And as you mentioned, Steve, different types, uh, these are what we call extracts, and these are when I mentioned about that weird growth of the mistletoe, it's actually defined as a semi-parasitic plant with active ingredients that varies with host trees or the different types of trees. One tree that is common is the fir type, fir tree. And this is used for chemo radiation patients, uh, just reduce general uh, condition or maybe a bad look for clinical presentation, end stage type of uh, cancer. And the ones who didn't respond well to the other types of uh, mistletoe preparations. And even now, we're not going just into the realm of cancer therapy, but also autoimmune diseases. So the fir tree is a good choice for that. People who have weird allergies or just food sensitivities, for example. Um, children and even adolescents with cancers. So that's the use for the fir tree. Now, the other type is the apple, apple tree. This is for women, basically breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and uterine cancer. They like to use this type. And lastly, the pine tree version, and this is for special tumors, like the sarcomas, the hard to treat type of cancers. And you would see now there are different uh, strokes for different folks in terms of using mistletoe. So the your clinician will choose this for you. Wow, so um, you mentioned a number of benefits with the different types of mistletoe and benefits for cancer, but are there other clinical benefits? Well, Steve, yes. So it's not only for cancer, but let me let me expound also how it, it actually helps with, uh, with cancer conditions and non-cancer conditions. 
for, for non-cancer, it reverses uh, lowered uh, oxygen states. It enhances circulation or perfusion to organs and tissues, and also in relation to hormone regulation. It actually stimulates the production of, of hormones. And when you're talking about pain, it actually helps your pain medication or whatever pain regimen you're in to be more effective. It helps with brain cognitive uh, function as well. And when you're talking about uh, anti-aging, it upregulates the mitochondrial biogenesis of certain sirtuins or PG, PGC1 alpha. So all of those are what we call a bio regenerative um, uh, enzymes for, for mitochondrial production. And when uh, now you're talking about uh, cancer, it also actually helps with lowering down the lactic acid. So that's where cancer really likes to grow. And when you're talking about patients who had adverse re re reactions towards chemotherapy, radiation, it lowers down the, the effects of these in, in conjunction when you use a mistletoe therapy with the therapies. It also improves survival of these cancer patients in relation to just making sure that they can tolerate therapies. Uh, people who go through hyperthermia, that's another modality for cancer therapy. People will tolerate that more with mistletoe. And even when you're about to do radiation, it will make radiation more effective. And if you're starting to develop resistance to chemo drugs, this one will reverse that so that you can respond to that drug better. And when you look at this, it, yeah, it, it comes with so many things as well. But it's, it's a win-win, as you can see. But now, as you can, I just want to emphasize, it's not only for cancer. There are better uses for it. Wow. Everybody asked your doctor about uh, mistletoe. Um, so you said this is an injection. I assume you can do an, an IV drip. Um, and um, are there any known side effects? Uh, yes, yeah, Steve, you mentioned about the, the, the preparations. Yes, you can do IV is something that we recommend more for cancer patients. But for the one that are non-cancer patients, you can do this injectable. It can be, yeah, it can do this at home or your clinician can give it for you. But when you talk about injections, of course, the usual, where you inject it, could there be a reaction, redness, pain? Yeah, it can be. Uh, but for specific for mistletoe, you can actually develop antibodies to it. So that's why when you even do IV therapies uh, for cancer patients, you only do it for six months, to the most 12 months, and you stop. You need to get, get that body rested so that they won't develop all of these antibodies. Flu-like reactions, uh, fever, that's number one. Patients can actually develop high-grade fever. and You need to stop that therapy when it, that it does happen. And also rashes. It might be an allergic reaction to the actual mistletoe or just the actual uh, reaction to that specific injection. And for cancer therapy, I mean, there are, uh, there are supportive, <clears throat> we have to be cautious about cancer therapy and the side effects. Sometimes what caused it? Is it the chemotherapy or mistletoe, right? But they can overlap sometimes. For example, like um, the, the rash. Uh, when you get a new chemo drug, it can produce rash, but also um, uh, mistletoe can do that. That's why you have to make sure you do this with an experienced clinician. And mistletoe is out there, but you really just have to know who's doing it the right way. Okay, so those are some of the side effects. Is is this a subcutaneous injection yes. or is it intermuscular? It's mostly sub-Q. And here's the okay. weird part. It's um, so like an insulin you, needle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, not really. I mean, an insulin needle. Sure. Insulin I haven't done an insulin A little deeper? Needle. A little deeper, yeah. Just because uh, one of the things here is I've seen it create a rash. So that rash actually looks weird, but it will go away. Um, and that's why I want a little deeper, just rather than being on the, on the, I mean, using an insulin needle. So yeah, maybe in okay. the middle of a sub QIM, but it does say sub Q. Okay. Okay. Now, is there, you kind of talked about using it for different things. Is, is there something that works in combination with? Yes. So, uh, and then that's the, the beauty of, of mistletoe. It's just synergistic with so many things. You can do it like with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, high dose vitamin C, cannabis, ketogenic diets, uh, supportive herbs and nutrients and supplements, uh, lifestyle, light therapy, uh, vitamin D, even hyperthermia. And this can be interpreted as, oh, all for cancer therapy. Not really. I, I suggest 
uh, a hyperbaric oxygen for patients who, who just wants to do anti-aging, for example, and even autoimmune diseases. That's why it's so versatile as a, a therapy that it can definitely work with so many integrated modalities. Okay, so last question I have. What about someone like me, a, a healthy 60 plus year old, you know, I'm healthy. Um, is there a way that I, I would use this or that you would recommend for your patients like me that wanted to try this? Yes, that's a good question, Steve. And I do know of, of patients and people who use it for healthy purposes, maybe a tune up. So it's not, you're not going to go through the, the regular cancer protocol, right? This is just you doing this like once a year maybe a series of, of six or, or eight injections. And it actually, as I mentioned to you, hormones can be supported, cognition can be supported, the mitochondria can be uh, supported for healthy individuals. But again, one of the specific emphasis that I want um, to probably consider a little bit more on this are the ones who has a good amount of cancer history in the family. Uh, example, like there's a lot of breast cancer in the family and you yourself want to prevent breast cancer uh, development in the future for you. This is something that I would like, all right, let's do a tune up. Here's something that you should probably consider and do even once a year, even though you're not in that stage yet. But overall to answer your question, yes, it's for the healthy, for the non-healthy, it's for someone who's looking for immune boost, uh, but it just varies in terms, of the, in terms of the dosing and frequency related to what situation the patient is. Wow, that is amazing. So there you go, everybody. Mistletoe is not just for kissing people <laughs> on the holidays. Um, amazing. Ask your doctor about that. Dr. Nario, thanks for being with us. Well, thank you, Steve, for having me again. As we all know, knowledge is power. And thank you for letting me provide you with the edge on longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the value edge. 